Hi everybody, welcome to week one in small business strategies for innovation. I'm Abby Bemis, your instructor. Um, my dog and my kitty cat are also in this room and interrupting videos occasionally, so bear with me. Um, I just wanted to welcome you to the course, um, put a face with the name that's going to be sending announcements and things throughout the term. Um, also give you a little bit of high level understanding as to what to expect throughout the term. Hopefully you're starting to get a good understanding by just perusing around Canvas, um, but I'll give you a, a high level overview. Um, in small business strategies for innovation, we are going to think about sort of two major buckets of material. Uh, the first is just building your business acumen in terms of innovation strategies and what innovative companies do. So they say that there are no new ideas these days. I actually think that that's somewhat true. Innovative companies are taking assets, behaviors, strategies, and combining them in unique ways. And we can learn a lot from that. Um, so the course textbook that I've selected is called 10 Types of Innovation. I think it's a really useful organization of ways to think about what companies do to be unique, in what areas of your company you could advance new practices to set yourself apart from your industry. Um, it's a pretty approachable text. Hopefully you like it. If you need additional background or vocabulary, um, always feel free to reach out to me. So studying business, studying business practices is one area that we're going to focus on throughout the course. And then second track is yourselves. So how can you be an innovative leader? Within a small business world, I can almost guarantee that if your company is being innovative, you're going to be a part of it. You might be the one with the ideas. You might be the one executing them. So it's important to think about what we can bring to the place of work, particularly in a small business environment where you don't have an R&D center to outsource new ideas to. Um, there's no creative genius hiding in the basement. That's probably going to be you. So the good things about both innovation at a company level and innovative behavior at an individual level is that this actually is a known science. So they have done studies as to the usual patterns and behaviors that companies and individuals deploy to be innovative, which means we can take a look at that and then apply it to ourselves and to companies that we work with. So this idea of application um, is important to me in designing this course. Hopefully the examples that you encounter, the questions that you're asked, both at a personal reflection level and at a company reflection level are things that you can then apply to future work. Um, I'm an adjunct faculty member with BGSU Firelands, which means I have a day job. So as I think about education, I'm really focused on what I see on a day-to-day -day basis and what I know would be useful if people did and knew more about. Um, we run a program at my office called the Regional Incubator for Sustainability and Entrepreneurship, where we are counseling entrepreneurs every day about how to have the right design to execute a creative idea profitably and then how to consistently execute on their idea to continue to make money. So both skills are difficult. The idea, I'm going to assure you, is not usually the hard part. So something to keep in mind as a theme throughout this course and something um, that hopefully some of the examples that I can bring from work will help you to grasp. Um, I'll frequently jump in in discussions with a local business example, particularly a small business example, because a lot of the text will focus on major companies um, because we all have a shared understanding of who an Apple and who an Uber and an Airbnb are. They're good examples to think about concepts and then hopefully we can all um, practice localizing it to our place of work, to a local small business, to ourselves. Um, the capstone project for this course will be doing just that. Um, Corey Hill Orchards is a local small business who has agreed to be a case study for us. Um, I'll be publishing some more materials about them this week. I'm just waiting on a couple financial statements from the company. So they are giving you real data about their company. 
giving you a real history and asking you as students what they should be thinking and doing differently in the future. So in terms of pacing of the class, we're going to spend the first three weeks, three to four weeks, thinking about innovation, learning some common practices and understanding. And then the last three weeks, we're going to take a look at Quarry Hill or again, all throughout those weeks, you're going to have an assignment that is a personal skill building exercise. Um, in addition to the skill building exercises, um, the Quarry Hill assignments and capstone project, um, you can expect a weekly discussion post to interact with just to crystallize your learning uh, from readings or I have a few podcasts assigned to you. Um, and then quiz, the occasional quiz will also be used. So that's a good understanding of what to expect in terms of assignments. Other things I'd note in terms of policies and expectations, um, this is a seven week course, so it's going to fly by. I'm sure you know that, I'm sure you've experienced that, um, and I'm sure you've experienced some online learning now. So what I'll also emphasize is that it's really, really important to keep up in a seven week course that's all online. If you get behind a week, it becomes really hard to keep up and contribute in a valuable way. So you will note that there are some penalties for tardy assignments and I will not be giving um, replacement quizzes should you be late on those assignments. So keep that in mind and, and practice good discipline. I completed my master's partially online myself, so kudos to all of you. I do know it's difficult um, and I, I appreciate um, your application and, and your good practices. Um, to that end, um, to hopefully make things easy on you, I have one due date each week for all assignments, and that's Monday by midnight. So you can always expect to turn in whatever you were required to do throughout the week on the following Monday by midnight. Um, of course, Monday has two sort of exceptions throughout the term. Um, Labor Day is your first week your, of assignments due September 7th. I still would like you to turn things in by midnight on Labor Day. Um, plan ahead, think ahead. Um, hopefully, unfortunately, not all of us are traveling these days, so that's a, a thing that we can accommodate. And then finally, um, finals week, your term would normally end on a Friday, um, October 16th, let's say. Um, and I am automatically granting everyone a three-day extension to turn things in again on your usual Monday midnight deadline, um, but should all of you want to wrap up your team assignment by the Friday that ends term, you'd be more than welcome to turn it in by that day, of course. Um, so things to keep in mind for the Monday deadline. Um, with that, I, I guess I'll just say thanks for signing up for this class. Um, I don't think innovation has ever been more important for companies. Um, the world is changing rapidly around us. Um, so between just general technology advancements and then the change in consumer behavior, uh, we're now existing in a pandemic life where company models were overturned overnight and you had to see who was agile enough to think on their feet and respond to a crisis. Um, so that ability to think about problems, to think about how companies can be quickly reconfigured is something that is really valuable in COVID world, but really all the time as our, as our world just continues to advance and hopefully become more innovative. Um, enjoy the course, um, stay in touch. As always, please let me know questions, concerns, um, and anything else that comes to mind.